Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in really on an important aspect to understanding a narcissist or a psychopath, but really that of the malignant narcissist who really needs a posse, a individual who is in a relationship with them to really have unwavering loyalty. I, I really feel that the unwavering loyalty and then the guilt that is sort of insinuated is if you don't adhere, if you don't comply, if you don't adopt their rules, their standards, and their boundaries, that you will be basically a uh, person that is untrustworthy, that is not desired or not desirable. There is a fear element that if you don't be loyal to them, if you betray them, there's this feeling of guilt that is ensued. And so guilt is really going to be a fancy term for basically breaking a code of fear. There's sort of a narcissist code, if you will. Very much like turning, you know, a combination on a lock. Um, and part of their control, I feel, part of their manipulation, part of their superiority complex, con complex really is kind of like that they're the one and only. And it's the double standards. In other words, they are requesting an adherence to a loyalty to them and the boundaries and standards that they set up for not only the terms of the relationship, but what then becomes required to be adopted or adapted to by you, this compliance, which sort of in an unspoken contract gives them, you know, the feeling or the sort of nonverbal contract, meaning an unspoken or a nonverbal code a nonverbal understanding. So in other words, something that goes unquestioned, uncommunicated, undiscussed. It doesn't hit the airwaves. It is not discussed out in the open. There is no sort of cooperating or meeting of viewpoints. It's it, part of the, the, the traits I feel as part of the relationship. <clears throat> and one of the requirements which people feel that they are really adhering to in the name of love. In other words, they mistake it as the terms of engagement, the terms of endearment, the terms that are required to keep in this relationship. In other words, there is this element of guilt, a tinge that if you sort of don't go along with, with their viewpoint of what is right, their viewpoint that they are you know, this superior one, this one who's laying down the law. In other words, there is an element of choice that is removed from the supply. In other words, there's this feeling that a fear that once you establish your own choice, which is your free will, which is the seat of your empowerment or part of the seat of your empowerment, that that choice which is oftentimes bestowed upon you for your liberation, your freedom, and your happiness in your individuality and the connection and experience of such so that you don't have to go begging for it, chasing it, feeling guilty or wrong as if you have, you know, you've ended up on the wrong side of decisions. It is actually the right side. You are arriving on the right side of things when you are not in a guilty state. <clears throat> The, the narcissist, though, they, they require this sort of unwavering guilt. I'm sorry, they, they require this unwavering loyalty and um, adherence to just sort of being a ring master, a ring le leader. You know, they are not good at sharing. They are not good at passing the torch. You know, but the narcissist doesn't want you to see what they're not good at. Question it air out the dirty laundry. They don't want to see it. It makes them feel embarrassed. And namely, they are using this tool of shame, which is usually already kind of like a smoldering fire, which is burning within somebody. 
you know, if especially if you've been through previous traumas with this individual, uh, previous traumas with other people that are similar to sort of that guilt, you know, burdening, that they will sort of ignite a smoldering flame, a just sort of wisp of, you know, of, 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 of a, inf you know, of a, I am, you know, I am not good enough. Don't trust your instinct. Don't trust your feelings. These are things that are inherent and indigenous to you. And you, you know, really important is that you value this. This is to be placed on supreme value. You know, you need to value what is inside of you above and beyond really the narcissist viewpoint or their pressure. Um, which comes across as you must be loyal. You must adhere. Otherwise, you know, you're going to sink into the depths of no man land, no woman land. You're going to be a nobody, a no one. And that, you know, this is, you're not going to be able to emerge from this successfully. There's this sort of unspoken terms of engagement in order to be in this relationship with a narcissist. And, you know, the problem is that they have so many flying monkeys. They have so many twists and turns to their story to propagate themselves as the number one in other people's minds. So it's kind of like they're like a billboard artist that has to wake up every morning and saying, how am I going to become number one in the minds of this person or these people, whether it's their family members whether it's their employer, whether it's the people who they are fiancéd with, um, you know, however the dynamics are, you know, they want to retain that number one status. And oftentimes, if you don't, if you sort of buck away, you know, um, you're, there's this sort of feeling that you are breaking the terms of engagement. And it's an unspoken term. So oftentimes, it's then left into that nebulous fog whether I can trust myself, whether I can trust my values, trust my viewpoint. Am I okay to say no to this person? Am I okay to say yes to this person? Should I put it off? Should I put it on pause? Being able to trust your feelings is one of the most valuable things that you can do. But it is this very experience which you are deprived of with a narcissist and definitely with a psychopath because they will replace your operating system, what is intrinsic and organic and valuable to you, your strength, your gifts, your uniqueness, who you are. I mean, it's like the acorn is going to become an oak tree. You know, they don't want you to grow tall and strong because if you become big, tall and strong, you could overshadow them basically in their mind. That is what is thought that is what is fear provoking to them. They get very afraid if someone is going to, you know, take away their limelight, take away their shine, take away their light, take away their center stage. They do not like to share with others. They are, they want to be at the pen, you know, the pinnacle. They want to be at the top. They want to be the one and only, especially if it means in other people's eyes. And yeah, if you're married, um, you know, then you should be loyal. You know, if, you know, you should, you know, there are certain reasons to be loyal, but the narcissist will take advantage of others. They will unequivocally take advantage of others. And oftentimes it is this experience that you need to acknowledge and validate to help bring them down a rung in your, in your viewpoint. So bringing, bringing them down a rung is to remember, um, like um, John Bradshaw says that, you know, they're operating on this, um, you know, healing the shame that binds you is that they are, are placating and they're playing on this shame. So if you have any sort of smoldering fire of shame or lack of confidence, maybe you haven't been through a lot of relationships or this is your first entanglement with someone who is narcissistic or psychopathic, you Oftentimes they will be and encourage people to be loyal to them for way too long, even if it, it is not in your best interest. And there will be this guilt. So they're controlling you by fear. Um, 
you know, and that, you know, that you won't be able to make it on your own. And that is disempowering. So disempowering and that enmeshment is what is holding your perspective and your I am together. So it's important to realize that your I am, your gut instinct is that little divine spark that you need to fan the flames of and acknowledge and validate and protect above at, at all costs and put your I am above that. This to people becomes sacrilegious. This becomes a big, almost like religious no-no. This it, it's on the seat of, you know, the, 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 the omnipotent where if they put their feeling, their gut instinct and grow big and strong, this oftentimes is a direct, you know, um, counter force to the force of trying to keep you down. So you, you know, then it, your acknowledgement of your, I am is met with resistance from others. <clears throat> it is very, very counterproductive to your energy and to your spirit and your psyche. It become, it become very psychologically tension, uh, can create a very, um, psychological sort of hardware that it's just like they're, it's a hijacking. It's like they've taken over your viewpoint when it's like your, I am is where the divine wants you. The divine, the creator who has created the water, who has created the air, who has created the experience of fire, you know, all these different elements, you know, you have to kind of get back to that and that your, I am, and that your ability to perceive, especially the essential elements on your own, taking in sunshine, taking in and understanding the importance of air, taking in and understanding, you know, the feng shui of your life. What direction are you facing? You know, are you facing and understanding where the sun rises and where the sun sets and being okay with where the sun sets for that individual? It becomes, you know, um, a very important tie to loosen up and then let go of. Um, but oftentimes there is this guilt of letting go because if you violate the loyalty that has been part of that contract there, that's how, you know, the guilt will inflame and, and create like a, a, um, an overwhelming heat, you know, a panic stricken state. So you have to realize that this oftentimes is met with panic and resistance, but it oftentimes it's the very thing that you need to acknowledge and validate that you don't need to be loyal to this. You might have a value of such, but what is your true value? I value love, I value friendship, I value togetherness, I value commitment. Find out what your values are in this relationship. You don't have to share it with them. Keep this private, keep this secret, and keep this sacred with yourself because your values are what are truly fueling uh, a lot of this tension and you are not a match to this individual whom you've been loyal to because your, oftentimes your values are not fulfilled or they're not expressed or they're not flourishing. They are not evolving. They're not growing. They're not manifest with this person, but they don't want you to see it as such. They don't want you to experience that as such. They want to keep a loyalty to you where you're serving their needs. And you really will not understand this until you realize you need to be loyal and that loyalty is okay to let go and realize that you, it's okay to be loyal to your values, loyal to yourself. But do you see how this can be a, a direct contradiction to a narcissist or a psychopath relationship? It cannot simultaneously exist oftentimes when it gets very severe. So you need to make a choice. And even if you have repeatedly made a choice to be loyal to them, realize that this is very, you know, very much hardwired into you and has been part oftentimes of your value system. But you really need to tease away and understand what it was the value that you were bringing to the relationship <clears throat> that you that you believe in, not on the other side. They aren't even part of the equation. You need to get the narcissist out of the equation here for a moment. Be willing to look at your happiness bottom line. Oftentimes it's so enmeshed and it's so factored into either a certain viewpoint that you need to really reinvent yourself and be able to reignite, reignite your I am and become loyal to that. 
it becomes very difficult oftentimes in a test of your direction. And it's okay to recalibrate. It's, you know, recalibrate meaning adjust, make an adjustment. I am loyal here. I am loyal here. I am loyal here. And such I have the faith. So loyalty is one of these abstracts that you need to look at, <clears throat> especially as it connects to a value within yourself, a value that you, you possess, you, your I am. Okay. And so what was, and oftentimes it might be family values. It might be, I, you know, I value having a family. I value being a storyteller. I value being able to cook. I value being able to share a roof. I value being safe. I value being able to trust. I be able, I tr I, I value being able to share my deepest secrets. I value being able to be myself. I value that you take me as I am. Great Joni Mitchell song back in the day. I think it was from her album Blue. Take me as I am was one of just her great just beautiful statements in her song, won't you take me as I am? And if one of our viewers knows that, I will, you know, if you want to post a link, it's just, you know, it just, it's one of those, you know, bottom line, gut-wrenching, oftentimes when it's sung, it really will speak to your soul. And so you really need to take you as you are, take you as I am. You know, I embrace me as I am. I take me as I am. So it's a very powerful sort of present moment epiphany that if you can take that and really embrace that, oftentimes the love, you know, of, of accepting yourself is very scary and it's very powerful. So a lot of people inherently will resist it because it's so unfamiliar. I hope that this makes sense and you realize how important it is to become loyal to yourself, become loyal to your I am, and oftentimes repivot and redirect that when necessary so that you're you're getting that that smile, that ease, that energy. It's so important to experience that. This is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today, and I hope that the videos, these videos, do help. Please share, please subscribe, and please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace be with you throughout your day today.